Hi, this is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So, first of all, the main thing when we are um, trying to talk about business, about money, and to bring faith into this topic, into our life, we must understand that we're holding ourselves as believers. So, or else we wouldn't talk about it. Means that we're not trying to figure out a way how to make more money and let make Hashem partner in our business because maybe Hashem will bring us more clients and, and more bounty. That's, that's not our topic, that's not our conversation. Our conversation is based on our faith. Anyway, we believe that Hashem is with us. We have that faith inside of ourselves, inside of our minds. We believe that Hashem exists, that the Creator is live and exists. And now we're trying to remember Him while working, while making our business, making our deals and, and whatever. Because, for an example, every person will agree that as a believer, you want to be loyal, you want, you want to find yourself, that you're able to work without lying, without cheating, without stealing. You rather, as a believer, to do all your business out of honesty, and pure heart. So, usually people will think that loyalty is only between people. I need not to lie to my clients, I need not to lie to my colleagues, I need not to hide information from whatever, between people. But the real loyalty is between you and Hashem. And from that point of view, I want to explain what that I came to explain about financials and about money. Sometimes in war and sometimes in business you need to be a warrior and you need to be a fighter and you have people around you that are willing to take over your success. And sometimes they will do bad and negative things to you and they're willing to damage the person to steal his fortune, his luck, his money, his clients. So now a person is finding himself that he wants to be gentle, that he wants to be nice, but he's surrounded with sometimes even filthy criminals around him that will do whatever it takes to destroy his success. So now in a situation like that, to be, lo to be loyal and to be truthful and to be gentle is impossible. You're shooting yourself in the leg. It's not an option. In that moment you must fight. So. As people that really wants to dedicate their life to what they believe that is right, and they are believers, they do believe that Hashem is with them, we need to bring Hashem into our daily situations. We need to have our mind set to faith and to discuss in our mind the situations that we're confronting with Hashem. And I mean that sometimes you need to remember that for Hashem and for the reason that Hashem put you in your place, you need to fight and you need to protect yourself and you need to defend yourself. And even King David, that he was the Mashiach, he is the Mashiach of our nation, that he is the Mashiach of the world. And he was a poet and a righteous man and he was singing to Hashem and praising Hashem and dancing to Hashem. And in time of war, his hands were red from blood and he killed thousands of people and he was shooting with bow and arrow and he had a sword and he was going and fighting and taking heads off and whatever and he killed thousands and thousands of people and he stayed the same gentle King David that we know from the book of Tehillim. The secret is that in the time of war you need to be a warrior and in the time of conversation you need to be a man of peace. 
a man of negotiation, a man of understanding, a sensitive person in time of conversation, of communication. But you always need to do whatever you do out of your solid faith in the Creator and understand that as a believer, as a person that knows that the Creator is with him, sometimes you need to fight and sometimes you need to kill. Sometimes if Hashem brings you to that situation that you need to fight for your life or for the life of another innocent person, you need to protect yourself even by killing your enemy. If a person came to kill you, you need to kill him. And it's not always to kill, it's not always to shoot. Sometimes it's to block his way from damaging your company. Sometimes it's to block him from damaging innocent people. But we must set our minds that in those situations we won't work out of our fear, out of our anger, frustration and impulse. Just out of our faith that we are trying to build something good here, that we're trying to make something honest here and we need to defend ourselves. Now, it depends in your inner search for the truth. You need to want to be an honest person, not only wealthy or successful or rich. You need to want that in that path for your success, you're not going to lose your character, your good attributes. And that desire of yours to stay honest and to stay pure will be the light in your path to guide you to the real success that will bring you not only to wealth, just also to your spiritual success and financial comfort. Because many people are losing their minds because of money. And for an example, that righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, he wrote in Likutei Moran that money can make people crazy. Just the fact that they have money, the money holds spirits. It holds nefashot. This is why money in the holy language calls damim. We're calling it damim. Damim is blood. And on the blood it's written that it's the spirit. The life spirit of a person is in his blood. If a person is bleeding, his life is running out of his veins and he's dying. Why? Because the blood contains and holds the spirit. Now the money got the same name. Blood. Damim. Why? Because it's moving in the world between people and it delivers life. You get money, now you can buy food, now you can pay your rent. It gives you life, it gives you oxygen. And if a person is losing money, Ani chashuv kemet. A poor person counts like a dead person. He doesn't have anything. He's lost, he's dead. He doesn't have money, he's broke. He will go and knock on doors. He doesn't have no honor, no respect. He's losing his mind. He's close to death. Why? Because he cannot pay his living for his living, for his expenses, and to be honorable. He's not able to support himself. And the money is the thing that gives the person the power and strength, his stability to stand on his feet. There's another very important detail that the money is like a wall that is protecting the person. And it's also physical and it's also spiritual. When a person has money, so that money, by that money, he can buy for himself all those things that are needed, required for him to protect himself, that the car will be brand new and working, that he will have alarm cameras, whatever he needs. That he, whatever he needs to have, he will take it, he will buy because he's got money. But also spiritually. Those spirits, those souls, those sparks of life that money contains, that money holds, are spiritually surrounding you and protecting you. But when you are idolizing that money, when the person is losing his mind because of the money, he's getting dizzy, spinning because of the money, losing his connection to faith, all those spirits becomes to be like ghosts for him and they're making him crazy because here there's money and here there's, there's money and here's there's an option and here's all oh, the enemies attacking thieves people trying to and all those details become his surroundings and every one of them is a potential enemy and he's receiving fears and hearing voices from every trap, from every situation and he can easily lose his mind because of all of the money 
that are actually communicating spirits that are whispering in his ears, take me, buy me, protect me, do this, do that. And he's losing his mind because of his lack of faith, because of the spirits that are surrounding him. But when that person is a stable and solid person with inner understanding of his goal, so no matter which voices and distractions he will have in his path, he will always connect what that he's going through to faith. He will have the ability to take outright conclusions and understandings even from the hardest life challenges that he will experience in his life. Every situation will warn him from the future. Every difficulty will give him certain experience to know how to deal with similar problems in the future. He will build himself because of his life difficulties and the challenges will not break him just will give him the strength to go and to be more blessed and wiser. The rabbi that I was learning in his place for 12 years, until seven years ago, he called me the man of miracles in all that is connected to money. He, called, he told me, Ata isha nisim. You're the man of wonders in everything that connects to money. Now the question is why? Based on what? I'm not a, 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 a wealthy, rich person. I have one house that I own, that I bought. And the secret is that in every situation, I always have what that I need. If it's when I don't have money at all and I need $10 to buy milk and bread, I'll have that $10 before I will have to pay. And if I need to buy a house, if really I need to buy a house, I'll have that money to go and buy a house. It's going through $10,000 for tickets for all the family from Israel to the US and 15000 or 20000 if we're going to South America too and we need to pay for tickets. Somehow, always the money is flowing, paying the bills and covering all of our expenses. And that is a very high level and I'll explain to you how you reach to that level. Based on that level, you can reach the heights. If you don't need to buy a house and then you buy a house, when you really don't need that house, you're not really investing in properties, you just want to have another house, you might not have that money, you might not have that fortune. But when you do need that, and even for business, and even because it's a good investment and you're a businessman, if you have that blessing that always you receive what did you need, that's exactly the blessing that you need. Now, it's coming based on your inner understanding that there is a creator with you. Maybe 10 years ago, my <coughs> wife told me, we need to buy a house. I told her, okay, no problem. There was a big problem. <laughs> we weren't even able to, 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 to afford to take a, a mortgage. We didn't have the money to, to, to pay for the first payment for a mortgage. We for sure didn't have the income to pay the monthly um, um, payment of the mortgage and, and on. We were struggling on the daily expenses. And she says, now I want to buy a house. But I told her, okay. I went to my rabbi and I asked him, what should I do? My wife wants to buy a house. He said, okay, go and look for a house. I told him, okay, and when I'll find that house, what, I'll, why, what should I do? He said, look, when you'll find that house, come let me know and we'll talk about it more. But as for now, Go and talk to Hashem about it. Go and do six hours in Bodedut. What does it mean, six hours in Bodedut? Six hours of honest conversation between you, between me, to the Creator of the world. Go talk to Him about your issues, your problems. I said, you know what, okay. I start going in the streets, looking for houses, nice properties, the best properties around, something that my wife will like. If, anyway, I don't have how to pay for it, so, and we're gonna buy it based on miracles and wonders, so let's find something nice. And I went to do six hours in Bodedut, standing, finding myself standing in the field, in the Holy Land of Israel, close to Jerusalem area called Bet Shemesh, standing over there in the, in the forest, in the, in, the, in the fields, looking to heaven and telling Hashem, Hashem, 
I need you to buy me a house. And like, it's crazy. Yes. And based on that craziness, I'm talking for six hours straight. Words that are coming out of my mouth for my heart. Please Hashem. We need a house for the family. I need a house for my children to live in. I was suffering from the landlord in that house that we're renting. My wife, she's not happy. Let us have our own house with no debts, with no sorrow, with no pain. That is going to be a nice house. Please Hashem. And talking and talking. Place to host guests for Shabbat. That will have our comfort. That will have our rooms. And that it will be wide and nice and pleasant. And going to smell good and going to look good. And I'm talking and talking and talking. Can finish six hours in Bodhidut like that, just being honest and truthful with Hashem, and finishing that in Bodhidut, going back to my house, telling my wife, listen, I'm sure things will get better, don't worry. And I'm going speaking to my rabbi again. And he's telling me, don't worry, you have your house, it will come. I told him, okay, when? He said, you need to pray a little bit more, but don't worry, you'll find your house, it's yours, you don't have no problems. He gave me confidence in myself that my prayers were important in the eyes of the Creator. He gave me the strength to believe in myself that what that I am doing is real, that I'm not dreaming. To make that long story short, because it took us eight months until we bought that house, but literally we bought that house with wonders and with miracles. And if you're going to ask, how did we pay for all those wonders and miracles? Every time, in every situation, something else happened to answer our need. If it was through a certain loan that we received, if it was through a certain gift that we received from our parents, support, whatever. All had some kind of physical grab, some physical reason in the physical world. But if you would look deep into the divine plan, you, will, you would see that it all took place in a certain moment. And based on the prayers that we were praying earlier, before. And in the end, we bought that house. And today that house is hosting... 12 people, Bahurim guys, that lives in Israel, in Jerusalem, because we're here in the U.S., we don't live in that house anymore. And this house is a fantastic guest house that gives a dormitory to 12 people to sit and learn Torah in Jerusalem. Now, I went and did six hours in Bodedut, and then went and did another six, and another six, and in one of the nights when I was very bothered, I went and I spoke to Hashem for 11 hours on that topic of the house. Hashem, we need a house, please give us a house. But I didn't drop my will. I didn't drop what that I believed in that... It is that Hashem, the creator of the world, He is the one that runs the system. I went to Him on a daily basis and I told Him, I am broke, I don't have money, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. But I know that you can deliver every amount, any amount that I need, you can supply and you can give. And based on that faith, I was communicating and talking to Him and explaining to Him my need, that He will answer my needs. That He will supply what that I need because I'm not able to do it on my own. Based on that attitude, I bought that house. Based on that attitude, when my wife after five or four or five years in that house said, I can't live in this house anymore and we need to move, we took another mortgage without paying one penny and we bought a second house. And after one year, we sold that house with a very nice profit and we moved to another neighborhood. And Hashem kept us above the water in every situation because of our understanding that the Creator, He is the one that is in charge. Now, many people think that when you speak to a religious person, that religious person will tell you that you need to become religious. That you need to keep all the commandments. That you need to wake up in the morning and pray shachrit. And to go to synagogue and to put filin. And to keep Shabbat and to eat kosher. And I am doing those wonderful things. But I don't think that ever I had it in my mind even. That the merits and the good things that the Creator gave me were based on my ability to function as an Orthodox Jew. 
I was always considering my success based on his loving kindness on me. Because I'm a person that started his Jewish life story in the age of 20 in the army while I was a soldier. And I was very far from keeping Torah mitzvot. I was clubbing and I was doing drugs and I was driving bikes and jeeps of, of the jeep brand. And I was having a lot of fun. And I was not at all into tefillin and Shabbat and kashrut. I ate pork chops and, and, and shrimp and lobsters. And I did whatever it takes to be happy as a secular person. I couldn't care less about faith. But I was a very truthful person. I was a very honest person. And because of that honesty that I was searching for good, because I really wanted to improve and not to lie to myself, and never to lie to others. I didn't want it to hurt other people, and I was a very sincere and honest person. Based on that, I felt, with time, that the Creator started to reveal His face to me, and to show me His existence, that He is with me. And He was communicating with me. He sent certain messages to me to open my eyes and to realize that He is walking with me. That he's opening those doors and those doors are not opening by themselves. That he's bringing those messengers and those people. And those people are not just by coincidence coming and talking to me about my thoughts. I start seeing that thread that is connecting all of those coincidences and making them all to be net and, and connected in, in, in the divine supervision of the Creator. And based on that, I'm guiding you to connect yourself to faith based on your inner faith and not on your religion and not on your religious approach or desire to keep Torah mitzvot. You like to keep Torah mitzvot, you feel connected to it, you feel obligated to it, great, do your thing. Your inner connection to the Creator is not based on how many mitzvot you keep a day or how early you wake up in the morning or if you're able to read Tikkun Chatzot in the middle of the night. Your connection to the Creator is a, res is a result of the nature of your creation. Your creation is a channel of light. Who you are is a beam of light that came down from heaven and found a place into physicality inside of your own body. And you own that body. Your body is your vehicle to carry as a holy chariot your soul from one place to the next. And you don't have a soul, you are a soul. Who you are is the soul that you are. And that soul is part of heaven. And you cannot do anything to change it if you want to and if you refuse to accept it. Who you are is the light of Hashem in this world trapped in your own body. Until Hashem will decree that that soul is coming back to heaven. Probably after 120. Until that moment you're trapped in your body. But that body is only your vehicle. And who you are is the light of the Creator that is treasured inside of you. Based on that understanding, you need to know that you're taking Hashem with you to the office and to every deal, to every phone conversation and every signature on every contract. Because Hashem is with you. And your soul is testifying on your honesty in front of the Creator of the world when you are being honest with no connection to what did you say to the person on the other line. If you are being honest, your soul will shine. And if you are bent and crooked and dark in your will, in your desire, you don't let the light of the Creator shine from within. Now, like I said before, the illumination and the spiritual success of yours not depend if you were gentle and never argued and never said anything bad or if you were fighting and found yourself cutting hands or taking heads off. It's not depends in your physical actions. It depends in the intention and purity of your heart. Who were you when you were gentle? Were you gentle because you are a gentle person? 
or because you had your reason to be gentle and actually your mind was very filthy while acting gentle. Were you violent and hard and harsh when you were fighting or that you hated that argument with all of your heart but you found yourself a victim in that situation and you had to take a position and you had to fight. The Creator is checking the truth and the truth is the vessel to contain the light and the blessing for your business and for your financials. Because when you are being honest with the Creator from within, that you're a truthful and loyal person to the Creator, He can guide you and illuminate the way that you're walking in. You become to be that lighthouse that other people will look at you and will enjoy and will find advice and answer and solution from you. Because that the light of the Creator will shine upon you. It depends in your inner intention, in the purity of your heart. Now, for people like us that are facing many challenges, that are finding themselves in many difficult situations, that people are arguing with us, that we're hearing f words and voices and, and sounds, and in every situation there's a risk and there is a lot of pressure on our shoulders, on our back, we must develop an inner channel of communication with the Creator. We must find for ourselves our break, our few minutes every day. And to stand in that quiet place, and in that quiet place to reset our mind and to bring ourselves back to faith, back to our own intentions, back to our own will and desire and an ideal plan of who am I, what am I doing? What is my desire? And what is my dream? And what are my plans? And to come back to yourself like that, it's to come back to Hashem. Because like I said before, to come back to Hashem, to come back to faith, it's not to become religious. It's to come back to the real nature of your soul. Because your soul is a divine soul if you recognize it and if you don't. If you're aware to it and if you don't, your light is the light of Hashem. Your senses, your emotions, your thoughts, your ideas, your intuition are all signals that are coming straight out of heaven to you to feel them, to sense them, to recognize them, to think about them, to deal with them, to argue with them, to confront them. Every situation is a lesson for you to recognize, that's the success of that challenge, to recognize that the Creator is with you, helping you to overpower difficulties and to admit in your weaknesses, to overpower wars or to protect yourself and defend yourself in time of hard, hard, the hard time of weakness of confusions, to be honest and truthful to yourself and to go with the light of your soul to win the fights and the wars that the Creator wants you to fight in. And it's not a shame and there are no better um, uh, war fields, that are ones that are better than others. Every person got his mission and in that place, he needs to keep God's will. There's going to be one person that he will be a poet or a singer, another person that will be a warrior, one will be an athlete, and everyone are important. And there's going to be one that will be a scholar, a learner, that will sit and learn Gemara 10 hours every day. No one of those people is more important than the other. The scholar that will sit and learn Torah, if his intentions are pure and he's really doing it out of a pure heart, we're praising him and thanking him for learning. But if he is a selfish, lazy person that hides 
over there and he's a liar that doesn't want to fight for us and he's not willing to help us and to be part of our family, of our tribe, of our nation. So we have a problem with him even if he is spending 10 or 18 hours every day in a Beit Midrash, in a yeshiva, sitting in a synagogue and learning Torah. If he is sitting like a leech on our back and just trying to take advantage of us, the Torah that he is, so to speak, learning will not protect him, not in judgment day and not in front of our eyes. Now if there is a soldier that his intentions are pure and he's fighting for his nation and protecting us and he's doing amazing things in his life, ready to sacrifice, we we'll love him even if he never learned one letter of Torah, even if he doesn't believe in the truth of the Torah, even if he doesn't care, couldn't care less about the Torah and the commandments at all, if really his intentions are pure and he's fighting to protect children, women, people, siblings, and his desire is to do good, we're going to admire him for the rest of our lives. We'll have gratitude and we'll be so thankful to him to protect us. And if it's a person with the, 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 the talent to sport, for sports or a videographer with amazing power of imagination that can make wonders on TV, so if that person will use the gifts that he received from heaven, he's not a warrior, he's not able to be a scholar, he's got a different background, different idea, he is a businessman. No matter who you are, who Hashem created you to be, if you will use those talents and the abilities that the Creator gave you for a noble cause, for a good cause, to make good delivered into the world, to make positive changes, even to be a simple person, just to live life of comfort, no one is supposed to have problems with you. Except of sick people that can't stand uh, shiny, happy people around them. Negative people that have problems, they have problems. They are suffering from their own attitude. But we, as logic and normal people, we don't care if you're a singer or a businessman, if you're a scholar or an athlete. We love you. If you're a good person, welcome. You can join us. We love you. We care about you. So we must not judge ourselves on who we are like that there might be someone else that is better than us as long as we are honest and truthful and loyal to our mission when we're just trying to do good. Now if we're fighting and finding ourselves losing our mind and become harder and cruel and not as gentle and not as nice, we need to take that break. Five minutes can do the job and in different situations even one hour or two weeks vacation is needed. Sometimes you need to clear your mind and to come back to who you are, not to the Creator. To the Creator it will be the result of you coming back to yourself, to your conscience, to your awareness of who you are and what is the purpose and mission of your life. Now, there are people that are saying that if you give my certain percent of your money you will be rich and I know thousands of people that gave my sir and they didn't sell one penny back. And I heard that rumor that if you keep Shabbat, so you're going to be so rich, you don't need to worry. And I saw thousands of people that are keeping Shabbat until today and they cannot cover the Shabbat expenses even on a weekly basis. They don't know what to do with themselves. So again, the halachic solution, the solution of the Torah, is not only what that is written with dark ink on white page, keep Shabbat, give 10%, give charity, do this, do that. That's not the depth of the commandment. This is the physical body of the commandment. But there is a life spirit to every commandment and commandment, and it is the real will of Hashem. There can be a person, like we said before, that he will keep Shabbat, that he will eat kosher, that he will give 10% of his income, but his mind is not really with the will of Hashem. He's doing it because he's terrified, because he wants to be honorable and, and well respected in the world to come, because he wants to be res respected by people around him, he wants to be known as Reb, whatever. He's got his own selfish will that is leading him to do things that will look in our eyes like, okay, it's good, what, what is he doing? But his mindset is very, very low. His intentions are, might be even very, very filthy. So the blessing will not come into his house. 
And even if he will have money, that money won't bring him to spiritual success, to be happy and satisfy and relax. He will always suspect people around him. He will live in fears, anxieties, anger, all of the time, makes some combinations and needs always to protect himself. And all of his life will seem like a war, like a battlefield, only because that his mind is not straight with the Creator. So he will find himself losing his mind even from what we're going to think and recognize as physical success. But there might be another person that he will be far from keeping Torah or Mitzvot, but his intentions will be pure and he will be an honest person with good and pure intentions and he will have the blessing from above because of his heart. We need to understand that the Creator's being and His Spirit to shine in our lives depends in our inner honesty, in how our heart is aimed in every situation and situation. Faith in the Creator is a challenge. It's something that we need to work on. If we are finding ourselves in the middle of the day, in the middle of deals, in the middle of arguments, in the middle of, of uh, whatever we're going through, to believe in Hashem, it's a challenge. But it's not the end of the challenge. The result of that challenge that we will show to ourselves and to the world that we have faith is when we're going to trust Hashem. When we're going to put our future in the hands of the Creator. Faith is the beginning <coughs> of that journey of walking with Hashem. Trust is the result of faith. When you believe in Hashem, it wakes you up to believe that there is someone that you can trust. But when you have that faith and it becomes to be part of you, you're trusting Him and you give Him the keys and you let Him choose for you and you are able to let your mind rest and you can count on Him that He will make things okay for you even when things are dark, even when it seems that things are falling. Trust in Hashem is higher level than faith in Hashem. When you have faith, you still lack of prayers. Faith is that there is a Creator. Now you want the Creator to help you, so you need to scream, you need to call Him, you need to beg, you need to do something to make Him see you and recognize you. But when you have trust, you don't do anything. You just walk straight and you know that Hashem is there. You know that Hashem is with you. That's why it's a higher level. I'm aiming on trust. I'm counting on Hashem in all of my actions. That's why I was able to go and buy a house without even having the salary to show and present to the bank that I was, that, uh, that I was able to stand in the payments that will come after. With such miracles and wonders we bought that house and then buying another house and then buying a car and re renewing that and buying a newer car and doing this and doing that and, and thousands of situations in life brought me, brought us to that place that we can see that there is a hidden hand that is running the world. And from one situation to the next, your life experience become to be more and more clear that it's become to be your simple wisdom. And it becomes to be who you are. And you become to be a real believer that counts on Hashem. Now, how can you know that you have that confidence in Hashem or not? If you see that He was there with you in the end of the deal, or He wasn't. If He was there, it means that your trust was perfect. If He wasn't there, it means you were not counting on Him perfectly. So you need to work on your faith in Him, on your confidence in Him, to trust Him more. <coughs> For that you need to talk. If now you have a partner and you're not talking, it's very, very hard to count on each other. But if you have a daily conversation and you see his intentions and he's expressing his anger, frustration on you once in a while and you're talking, you're communicating, you know each other much, much more 
then if you wouldn't speak ever and had the same contract between you, the confidence and the trust is based on communication. With Hashem, it's exactly the same. If you really want to know Hashem, if you really want to be aware to those signals, to those signs that the Creator is giving you on a daily basis, in every situation, in every minute, in every moment, in every deal, in every contract, in every conversation with any person, you need to have ways of communication, conversations with Him on those things. So for an example, in the evening, when you're finding yourself in your quiet place, you need to have a chat with Him and telling Him, Hashem, today I was going through this and that. It was too hard. I don't know. Is that your will for me? That's what you want from me? And that's it. Leave it alone. Tomorrow, suddenly you're going to hear the answer for that question that you asked yesterday night. Suddenly you're going to see things will be a little bit brighter, a little bit more clear, and will answer your doubts and will answer your questions and will f you will find solutions to your issues based on that faith that you expressed in your honest conversation with the Creator. And five minutes are a great thing. Ten minutes is a fantastic thing. To have a daily meeting with the Creator of opening up yourself to the Creator, opening all the cards with Him, being loyal with Him, first of all. Before of being loyal with people, before, I'm not saying don't be, you should be as much as you can to open yourself without hurting yourself, without exposing yourself to, to, to no kind of risk. But as long as you can be loyal, you should. But the beginning of that loyalty is loyalty to the Creator, is to have all the cards open with Him. To tell him, look, I want to be wealthy. I want to be rich. I want to do this in the world. I want to do that. Not to hide your intentions like you're playing in, in, in a hidden game of, 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 of some kind of, of hidden competition. No, to Hashem I'm pretending that I'm righteous, that I want to be pure, that I want to be ha ha uh, uh, holy, but actually I want to be rich and I want to make money. And I'll... That's not the right way. You need to say to Hashem, Hi, Father in Heaven, how are you doing? Everything is okay? I hope your day was fantastic. Mine was okay, wasn't so easy, but thank you for it. Now listen, I want to make millions. I feel them in my fingertips. I want to make money. Hashem, I want to buy properties. Hashem, I want a lake in my backyard. Hashem, I want deers running in my front lawn. Hashem, I want to have a Ferrari Corvette. Hashem, that's my dream. From my childhood, that was my dream. If that was your dream, if that's really your desire, why that you won't be able to speak about it with your parents, with your father? So parents in this world, we know they can be whatever. They can go through their hell and sometimes to have their own patterns and their own uh, difficulties. And sometimes you can't communicate with them. But at least we have Father in Heaven. Someone that we can believe that He really loves us. That His love is an unconditional love. So at least with Him, you can tell Him your inner secrets, your deep desires. Hashem, I want to build a castle. Hashem, I want to drive a limo. Hashem, I want to... Ha Why not? If that's your dream, if that's really what it will make you happy, and you as the creation of Hashem have that dream inside of you, and you know that without it, you don't feel that you will be happy ever. That's what you feel. So tell Hashem. And you know what? In the end of that prayer, if you feel a little bit ashamed, not so comfortable, so say that to Hashem. But you know, Hashem, I don't know if it's such a divine uh, 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 goal to have. If really that's supposed to be the purpose of my life, maybe. So, you know what? For now, that's my honest desire. That really what did I feel like doing and making today. But you know, if there is something more to life, if there is spiritual aspect to my life, if there are more things to do in life, please open my eyes, you know. I'm open-minded. Teach me. Guide me. I want to be spiritual as well, but I'm not so aware to that section in life. I don't really know what spirituality is. For now, that's what I know. And I'm trying to be honest with you. 
So please be with me and help me tomorrow and help me today and help me tonight and help me in this deal and be honest with Hashem. The verse is saying, Rachmana li babay. The Creator, He wants your heart. He's asking for the intention of your heart. And as long as you are honest, so Hashem is with you. Like that it's written, Hashem, Karov Hashem lechol korav, lechol asher ikreu vehemet. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. You should call Him with your truth. To be honest with Him. To tell Him your heart, your honest heart. To discuss your fears and your stress and your pressure and your dreams and your goals and your hopes. Sometimes a person will go and chase after money all of his life and it's not because he desires money, just because he's afraid to be lack of. And he's a millionaire with millions and millions of dollars and he's running after money because he's terrified to lose what that he has. And it's crazy. So don't be crazy. Be honest. Sit for five minutes and tell Hashem, Hashem, I'm scared, you know, I don't know. I can't deal with poverty. I can't deal with debts. It makes me crazy. I saw my father, he had horrible debts. I don't want to experience that. I saw my mother, she was crying. I don't want to suffer. I don't want life like that, Hashem. Be honest with him. Hashem's seal is the seal of truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. Your God is the God of truth. Now you want to be connected to him? You need to be a truthful person. Truthful to him, first of all, first step that you and him will have an inner channel of communication in your mind, through your soul, through your mouth, your heart, that you will be honest with him and telling him your heart. That's the key for real blessing in life. Blessing that won't be only financial, just also spiritual and emotional. That you will be able and develop the tools to have relationships that you will be able to learn how to communicate with people as well. And not only in your mind, always to defend yourself and protect yourself and to want and to hope and to, to, to desire and to make all tricks in the world to accomplish. Just to find a way how to express your heart. To be an open person, a communicating person. The wonders that I experienced in my life are in, in thousands, in every situation. I found the miracle and the wonder that was needed for me for that stage and for that level. And it came to me all of the time based on my trust in Him. That I was always moving forward and never stopped my journey. And I was always open and honest to tell Him my heart. And when I saw the wonders, I thanked him. And when I heard hard times and difficult hours, I went to him and I tried to solve those problems and issues with him. And I made the faith to be the light of my path in my journey. And it brought me to huge success until today. And the future is in front of us. Who knows what we're going to achieve and what Hashem is willing for us to do in His world. But every individual, every person, if you really want to have the blessings of the Creator in your business, in your life, in every situation, Ish Emunot Rav Brachot. A person of faith is full of blessings. You'll have all the blessings. If you will deliver and bring Hashem into your daily challenges, into your daily simple work, work with Hashem. Hashem is with you in that deal. Talk to Hashem. Hashem, I want that deal. Hashem, I don't want to lose that deal. Take faith, take Hashem with you to every signature, to every phone conversation. And if you feel, Hashem, now I must not expose myself. Hashem, now I cannot tell all the truth. Hashem, now I need to make up some cover story. Hashem, I'm stuck now. Know me, Hashem. I don't want to lie. Protect me, Hashem. I don't want to filth my hand. I don't want to make bad things in your world. Protect me. Make me do the mission that you sent me to do in the most honest and truthful way. And if you find yourself that you are cheating, that you are lying, so be strong as much as you can to stop. And don't do that anymore. And try to hold yourself from sinning, from making bad things happen. And go to Hashem and tell him, Hashem, listen, today I gave up on that deal and only for you. 
So bless me from a different source that I will see with my own eyes that the blessing is coming to those ones that are choosing you. And by being honest in every situation, you will see such wonders and such blessings in your business that you cannot understand, cannot imagine it. How wide and generous and open is the hand of Hashem. And He loves you an unconditional love based on who He made you to be. And you don't need to change that He will love you. You just need to work on your own inner love and exception of yourself. You must accept yourself. You must recognize who the Hashem made you to be. And to let it be. And to let His light shine from within. To reveal His godliness and His light to the world. Thank you. If you have any questions, I would love to answer. Thank you. You know it was a good speech, but there were, I don't think there was a sound in the office. <laughs> That's the first time <laughs> since they opened yeah, yeah, yeah. the business. Okay. <laughs> any questions, please? I don't know, I need... You know, he's listened to my classes for years. Yeah. It's nothing. Um, <laughs> any questions? What happens if you feel you, you want to be truthful, but you don't want to lose out? You don't want to lose out. If it's hanging in a thread. It's to lose everything. So, first of all, in like, like in life, you need to have an honest conversation with yourself. If you find yourself, for an example, that a certain challenge is too hard for you. Now you find yourself in a situation that you're about to fail in a sin. And when you check yourself, you see, I'm going to do it. Really, I'm failing now. I'm here. Here I go. Like, I'm doing it, Hashem. Okay? On Adam Arishon, on the first man, it's written that Hashem asked you, asked him, he asked Adam Arishon, where are you after he ate? So Adam answered him, I ate from the fruit, but Adam is using a certain, la certain word in the holy language that he's saying to Hashem, Va'ochel. Va'ochel doesn't mean I ate from the fruit. Even though that by Pshat, by the simple understanding of the verse, Adam was a man to confess and he said, I ate. But in the way that it's written, he said to Hashem, I'm about to eat more. I'm going to eat. He was honest to say to Hashem, Listen, I messed up, but sky is the limit. I'm not stopping. Hashem, it was too delicious. It was too tasty. He was honest to say the truth to Hashem. And that was his lifeline for the future. If you find yourself that you are stuck, crazy situation, not a recommended situation. We don't want to find ourselves in those situations. And I'm not exempting you from the responsibility of making a mistake in that situation. But if you find yourself that you're now about to make something wrong, that you're about to do, to violate some code, some rules, and you know it, what the Talmud is saying, what the ancient hand strips are saying to us, that if a person sees himself that he is about to sin, he needs to dress himself in a different way, in black or whatever, that people won't recognize him, to go to a different city and to sin over there and to come back to his house. At least don't damage your family, the good reputation of your community. If you find yourself, it doesn't permit a sin. But if you're finding yourself that in reality, with no rabbis, with no conversations, no friends, bottom line, I'm sinning now and no one in the world will stop me, so at least try to do as less damage as you can. If you're finding yourself that you too, find yourself too weak to deal with this situation, the temptation is too big and you are losing your mind, you're not able not to make that thing, at least be honest with yourself and admit, I'm doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. I want to fix it. I'm not able to fix it right now, but I want to. And if I don't want to, so I want to want to want to. One day, hopefully. <laughs> to be honest and sincere with yourself will give Hashem the way to access to your heart. In the future, He will answer. Something will come and 
and, and, and wake you up in the future. Something will help you to wake up because of your honesty. Even if your honesty didn't brought it's about, you to yeah, it's stop. About, it's about to be able to function, to be able to, 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 be, to be able to stay in business. You, 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 have to be, you have to be able to win it. Right, right. But the blessing of, of us is that even though that we think that we know what Hashem wants from us, many, many times we don't really know what He wants from us. Like I said on King David, King David, you would dream, you would think that we're talking about an angel, a gentle angel that sits and learns Torah, singing and composing songs. No, you're talking about a person that was running in the field with a bleeding sword. You're talking about a person that was fighting, that was hiding, that, his, uh, that he was injured, that he fell, that he was hiding in a cave. Many hard situations he found himself in, in that path of becoming the king of his nation. Also us. Sometimes the path that Hashem wants you to walk in is not the cleanest. It's not the most classic ones of them all. Sometimes your hand needs to be filthy with blood. Sometimes you need to do some things in this world that no one in the world can stop you. Because Hashem wants to challenge you in those places, in those dark hours, in those harsh situations. And only there your real faith and your real honesty and your real dignity will be challenged in a way that, that, that you will know who, who you really are and what your real powers are. So sometimes we need to go through those challenges and the test is not if to fail or not to fail, is how to deal with failure and how to admit in your mistakes and how to be truthful to come and do tshuva, to fix things after messing up and making mistakes. It's part of the deal as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.